Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud, focusing on our video and audio products, and thank you so much for joining me. Wanted to talk to you today about something which is very close to my heart, which is music, and specifically getting great music for your videos. The goal here today is to showcase to you um, a new panel designed by a company called Audio Network, which not only takes the pain away from searching and finding music, um, including licensing that music directly, which again, so much easier right inside of the application. But they're more than just, well, your average sort of stock music. Dare I say, they're truly a catalog, a production music catalog. And what do I mean by that? Well, frankly, as a musician and composer, when I hear stock music, I, I, I get turned off, all right? And I am a composer, so oftentimes I'll compose my own stuff. But a lot of times if I'm doing quick edits and things and I just need some underscore or some backing tracks or something that's easy to license and put up on YouTube, I don't have time. But the concept of a stock music library, it, it just didn't appeal to me. Production music, that appealed to me. And to have a true catalog that was made in-house, all the people who are part of the audio network created this music over 15 years, dozens and dozens of artists and composers. So this is a very special and unique community and you're gonna hear the differences in the music itself. So without further ado, let's just get right to it and I'll start showing you the workflow. And we're gonna start investigating this amazing audio network, uh, music production catalog, by first going to their site. So how do you get this plugin, which effectively runs as a separate panel inside of Premiere Pro? Well, if you navigate to, actually you can even, you can see here I'm actually at adobe.audionetwork.com or simply audionetwork.com or if you're based in the US, you wanna go sort of to the homepage, us.audionetwork.com. This is going to allow you now to download the Premiere Pro, uh, Premier Pro plugin for both Windows and Mac. Very simple installation instructions, I love this. Frankly, this experience alone right there makes such a huge difference. This made me want to start working with this. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that, I'm telling you that it is that, that initial experience. Download it, double click to install it, and you'll see that it's going to show up inside of Premiere Pro under the window menu, extensions. So that's where we're gonna go, all right? So let's go back over to Premiere Pro and go up to window, extensions. Now some of you maybe never have even gone into this menu before. So this is something pretty significant. If you look down here, you can actually see that we have something called Audio Network Music. And this is the panel that we want to focus on here. Window Extensions Audio Network Music. And this is, in fact, a panel that is integrated directly into Premiere Pro. Now, I happen to have an account here, so I'm already signed in as myself. And then right at the beginning, you'll see the first thing it says is, let's just start searching. Search and explore that incredible production music catalog to find the perfect music for your project. Okay, great. Now, before we start searching and stuff, let me go ahead and just play for you. I'm just going to dock this off to the side real quickly. I can undock it in just a moment. Let me play for you the content that I'm wanting to add music to. So this is a little piece uh, that I cut together for a friend of mine actually using some Adobe stock video, uh, 2K and 4K video. And actually I took one of my own compositions as the underscore initially. However, this is music which I plan on using for something else. So this is kind of like, let's assume this is that commercial situation where I've already licensed this someplace else. So I can't use this here. This was my temp track, okay? Now I wanna find stuff that I can, I can actually make permanent and that's going to fit. And when you take a look and listen, the music that I composed here is kind of in that epic orchestral kind of vibe. So just take a quick listen, and this is called uh, something called Adams, Alaska. Here we go. All right, so you get the idea. So again, it's that kind of majestic orchestral, there's choir, there's strings, there's big drums. This is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for that I think is gonna make this absolutely perfect. So let me go down here, I'm gonna mute this. Let's go and just undock this panel so you can actually experience the full beauty of it. All right, make sure that I keep it in view here so you can see it all. And let's start first just by going up to the top here. So once you install this, You'll see that under your name, and again, you can sign up for an account here, you're gonna have a couple different ways to kind of navigate this panel. So up here, we've got favorites. So these are tracks that you automatically favorite. And if I go there, you'll see I've got a couple in here that I've already favorited. You've got your purchases, you have your projects. Now what's cool about projects are, think of these as 
basically folders to organize the, your own mu or the music that you're searching and finding and loving, which you might reuse later, like anything, whether it's, uh, again, production music or, or production stills or vectors or graphics. You know, I build up collections of things that I might want to reuse. I do a lot of stuff that requires orchestral underscore. So I made a folder here called, called Orchestral and Epic, and I've got three different tracks inside of this project. Here's another one where I've got um, sort of rocking and driving music, again, for different various things. So this is going to, I can keep these organized so that I don't have to sort of go back and search later. And you'll find that as you start going through this and favoriting things, you're, you're probably gonna be, you know, it, it could, there's a lot of music there. So this type of organization just makes it that much easier to keep things clean and easy and really navigate through the rest of the interface. Settings, this is just something that I want to point out because I think this is very well done. And this is something quite brilliant about this, the way that this panel works, is that by default, when you start accessing, downloading previews or purchases for your Premiere Pro projects, by default, the audio network panel will save and store those files into the same location as the project itself. What? Yes, by default. So it makes it so easy. You never have to go looking for this. Oh, what drive did it go to? Did it go into my documents folder? Is it somewhere in you know, my user folder? No, it automatically goes direct. Now you can change the path, as you can see. You can browse to anywhere. Perhaps you'll have a, you know, you might have your own global uh, uh, network drive that contains all content that you download. This is just something very nice, very elegant. It just takes the pain away. They, they, they did all this fantastic work for you and it just makes it a lot easier. All right, so now let's go back to the beginning here. And again, we're talking about sort of majestic, orchestral, epic sounding music. So I'm just gonna start typing majestic. And right away, you'll see that three things populate here. So you've got majestic, majestic mystery, and majestic orchestral. So this indicates that people have tagged their music with these specific terms. So I think that's gonna be perfect. All right, so now we have all these various tracks. It's returned 100 results showing 1 through 25. So we want something, again, that's kind of in that epic vein, uh, something that's kind of big. So let's look for something like that. I can see here I've got some spaghetti western ballad stuff. Okay, I don't want that. I don't want a cowboy musical. I don't want dreamy, uh, stirring heroic with military overtones and builds. Okay, this could be interesting. So I'm simply going to click play on this. When I do, it's going to quickly start previewing here, give it a second, just takes a moment. All right, you see a nice rectified waveform, much like you see in Premiere Pro when you're working with audio files. Nice, you're very welcome. All right, we can also skip ahead. Now, I happen to really like that, so if I go ahead and favorite this, when I go to favorites here, and this is also something very well done, because I potentially want to favorite this, but I also want to categorize it, right? So I can go into favorites here, and you'll see now that I have the option to add it to my favorites, but I can also add it to my orchestral epic project. You can also, from this panel here, from this window, create a new project, again, which is just a way to organize the production music for, your, for later use or later viewing, all right? Really well done, simple, easy, get right to it. All right, now I wanna show you something else really cool right here. We can keep on searching. In fact, there's a couple down here. What was this one? Maybe this Humanity Returns. Let me just check this one. I think I was listening to this one before. I kind of like these drums. Now you might notice that when I hover over the uh, title here, there's actually a little drop down arrow. And if I click on that, this is telling me that there are 20 track mixes and then some related tracks. Hmm, what are the track mixes? So again, this is something that's really well done. And this is something which will enable you to have even more variety on a given track. And you might even find different variations of the same track already cut into specific lengths and actually sort of different remixed feels. It's the same basic music, but again, maybe they've remixed it in a different way. Maybe they've cut it down to fit a 30 second environment or a 60 second. This little trailer that I made happens to be 30 seconds. So this piece is 3.30, I'd have to go in and edit it myself. Maybe there's already a reversion in 30. Well, check this out. So now that we're looking at all of the track mixes, you can see, again, it's the same, it's the same basic track. We've got sort of variations on the theme here, but look at what we've also got, aha. What do we suppose 60 is? Yeah, it's a one minute version, all right? 
Here's another one minute version. Here's a 30 second version. Tense, expectant, orchestral, hybrid with choir and big drums. That sounds exactly what I want. Let's go ahead and preview that again. Hey, Caleb. Sounds pretty cool. So at this point now, I could actually download this video if I wanted to. Now, here's the real, uh, excuse me, <laughs> download this music if I wanted to. Now, I happen to have, uh, I purchased a license here. So um, what's going to happen is it's going to download a full resolution wave for me. Now, if you're just trying this out, it'll download MP3s. And then when you license, it'll download the full resolution wave. I'm going to download this and a couple others because I actually want to talk to one of the other amazing things that they've done with this panel is that they have the ability to actually create a folder for you directly inside of your own project and then place the music there, right? And here is that 30 second version that we just downloaded, okay? So you download the music, it actually physically goes to your drive where this project lives and it builds a folder for you inside of your project panel that contains all of the audio here. So it really, it doesn't get any better than that. I think this is just such an amazing addition to this whole workflow and makes it so easy. So now if I wanted to take that track, I could drop it down into our timeline here. All right, let's now redock this for a moment. Maybe we'll stick it right over here for a second. Wind this back and then take a look and let's listen to this. All right, now again, is that the right choice? Well, that's the benefit here, is that I can keep uh, auditioning the various tracks here, downloading them, again, find out all the details about them. So this is something else that they've done that's really, really cool. Let me go ahead and undock the panel here for a second. All right, so again, now you noticed before, all right, if we go back to one of these master files, you've got that little drop down, right, to show you alternate mixes. What you also have, though, if you actually click on the title, of the audio itself. This now tells you all of the various attributes, including the key that it's in. So this is very essential, uh, particularly if you're trying to augment some maybe existing underscore with one of these tracks. The meter, so is it 4-4, four, four? is it 3-4? I noticed before, and this is a waltz, so that's why this is 3-4 time. I've seen some 6-8, so this is musical, right? This isn't just stock, this is a production music catalog that gives a musician, a composer, the things that I want to know. The tempo, because typically if you're cutting something against a track or even in the case of this track that's underneath, I recorded this to a metronome, so I know that it's approximately in the 136 BPM range. I can find things that are in a similar tempo. Um, and again, it gives you sort of tempo notes. You've got your ISRC codes. Okay, this is all the stuff that's related to the actual licensing and leveraging this online and the year that this came out. Because a lot of this stuff you're gonna find, a lot of these artists are artists who, you know, their music here is not, again, this is, this is like production music. This is a true catalog of artists and composers. This is stuff that you could ultimately just listen to, <laughs> let alone actually use to augment your video. So now in my last couple minutes, I just wanna to talk to you about that, which is the actual licensing, okay? So let's go back here to Chrome and go over to some of the licensing and how it's explained. And you can see how to choose the right license for the project you're working on. This is one of the things that I've heard from many that it really, it's, uh, this is, these are the kinds of things that people get very um, tripped up on when they know that they need to license content. They wanna do it the right way. They wanna be legal about it, but they don't know oh, what kind of license do I need? And you know, some people are like, oh, is this like Creative Commons? What, what if this is going to an actual broadcast TV show? What if this is going just on YouTube? If I'm using it on YouTube, I've done stuff with music and it gets some kind of flag and then I don't know what to do and then I can't monetize or maybe I can share in the, mon how does this all work? So I've done a fantastic job here of explaining all of the various licenses. You can see if you just do a creator license and you can see the other thing too here, you'll notice that the online licenses are priced per track for use in a single video or production. Okay, so for creator, perfect for individual creators, personal videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo, videos of life events, weddings, graduations, editorial productions, student productions, okay, and gives you examples here. Creator plus, 
stops unwanted advertising on your video, allows you to monetize your YouTube content via AdSense. So this, again, if you're going to be using something for YouTube, right, that you're hoping to monetize. So this could be my friend's edit here, but he wants to monetize as people are going to his site. He licenses that track. He can legally license it and you're good to go. All right. And they've done all this work for you. Again, professional, this includes business, brand, or charity videos for websites, social media, and events, freelance portfolios, and show reels. Again, you can stop on wanted advertising. And then television and radio. And specifically, as someone who's done sync licensing in the past, which can be very daunting and very, very difficult, they've done the work here for you to make sure that it's legal, that it's licensed, that it's ready to go, you're not going to be flagged, and that content is going to be, be able to play anywhere and everywhere. Now, one other thing I want to show you here, which is also pretty cool, um, they've got this thing down here at the bottom of the panel, which is new. I believe this is only available in version uh, 1.04 of the panel, which is Refer a Friend, Win a GoPro. So if you click there, check it out. There it is. Invite a friend to try the panel, and you can get entered to win a GoPro Hero 5. That's pretty awesome. One other thing that they've done, and this is something which uh, we really appreciate too, is you've got a feedback link right here. So if you want to tell them how you think this panel is, or maybe you didn't find a particular kind of style, hard to believe, but it could be possible, um, you can search in here and give feedback. It'll take you to the web. You can sign up that feedback form and really talk to these people. I've met the folks from Audio Network myself last year at uh, NAB and IBC, a fantastic group. And again, such a, a welcome addition to have this panel built directly for Premiere Pro. So everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Jason Levine. Be sure to go to audionetwork.com and download the Premiere Pro plugin today for Mac or Windows. Thanks so much again for joining me, and I will see you. Oh, hold on, let me switch my screen. Take care, and uh, see you again. Bye-bye, everybody.